Not all DIY projects have to be hard and expensive. My husband and I are not professional DIYers, but we did bring this space to life. Laundry rooms can often be neglected spaces and places that just keep a lot of clutter. When designing and redoing a new space, I heard from a YouTuber, Lisa Holt Designs, who is a professional interior designer, is to start with the envelope of the room, meaning take everything out and start with the floors, the walls, and the ceiling. So that is exactly what we are going to accomplish in today's video. The first thing that we will do is take everything out of this space. I'll be giving it a pretty good deep clean, and then we will be ripping out all of this old tile putting in brand new funky cool fun tile and also adding board and batten to the walls i asked you guys over on my instagram to help me pick a color for this wall and i did choose the one that all of you guys voted for the last thing that we will be doing is adding a new light fixture and make sure you're subscribed because in next week's video i will be doing a massive declutter organizing and then finishing up decorating the space if you are new here, then welcome. I'm so glad to have you here and coming along on this journey with me. My name is Michelle and I typically do lots of cleaning and organizing motivation. And recently we decided to do a few DIY projects within our home. You'll be seeing Chris, my husband, help out a lot in these DIY projects, starting here in the laundry room. My first thought for the laundry room was to make it more functional. We actually have a pretty small laundry room with not a lot of storage space and no cabinets. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, then you'll know that the majority of the time my laundry room looks like those pictures on the right. Now I could go on and on, but I think that you get the point. Pretty disorganized, not functional, and just not really working out for us. When I was thinking of ideas on how to make this space more functional, I could have just gone to the organization process, which I will do in next week's video, but I kind of got the idea to just redo the space and make it so much more fun and obviously also give it a pretty good clean. Now I admit the tile, the walls, the light fixture, none of that is terrible, but we have been in this house almost seven years and we are wanting to change some things up. And as you grow, your style kind of changes as well. So that was our whole idea with this. Another thing we want to do is completely renovate our bathroom. And we figured that since this space is so much smaller, we can kind of practice in this area and then work on that next if all of this goes well. So the first thing we're doing here is moving out our washer and dryer and we do have to be prepared to have um, it not working for a few days and I do admit that the laundry does pile up quickly. I'm, I put these little space things on the bottom. It's specific to moving furniture so that you can slide large furniture without scraping up your floors. The total cost of all of the materials, the tile, the wood, the paint, everything we used was about $375 and it did take us, I want to say around four days to complete. But let's get started with cleaning up this laundry room first. You had to Cause you know I throw your suitcase out 
So as I finish up cleaning out this space, I didn't do a humongous deep clean on the floors because we're about to start ripping them out. Um, Chris is getting started with removing some of the edging on the floor. Hopefully I can really pronounce and say everything correctly. But um, the first thing that he did was take everything out and try and break a small little piece here on the edge with a hammer. So we did go out and get a rotary hammer drill and we use the tile chisel which is the attachment on the end in order to really get all the tile out if we were to sit here and hammer all of this up it would have taken days so chris kind of prepared and went and got that now we were planning on doing more projects throughout the house maybe our guest bathroom and then like we said our main bathroom so that's why we went out and invested in that so there you can see the rotary hammer drill and the tile chisel that he's putting underneath the tile in order to break it up. So initially we thought that this was going to take like an entire day to pull up all of the tile, but it just took him about a half of a day. So it came up a lot easier than we initially anticipated, which actually saved us a lot of time. Once you get the chisel underneath, you can start pulling out big pieces. Now, obviously this depends on the type of tile that you have. If you are going to be ripping up tile, um, which really depends on the amount of time that it'll take. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat. So I ended up grabbing a box and I am packing up all of the larger pieces that he's pulling up and I'm taking them out to the trash can. We're also using a shop vac to vacuum up all of the dust. You'll see later on that this does make a pretty big mess with dust because not only are we trying to chisel up the tile, we're also trying to chisel up all of the glue so that we can get to the concrete underneath. No. Now that we have all of the tile and mortar all chiseled up, then you can see how much of a mess that it makes just carrying things in and out of there. Our bedroom is also a mess because our bedroom is right out of there. Um, but the next thing we decided to work on before laying the tile was the board and batten walls. I wanted to add some kind of dimension, something a little bit different to these walls opposed to just painting them. And because we've done board and batten before, which we redid the whole wall in our dining room, and I'll link that video down below as well, um, we decided to kind of do a similar concept here. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, but also have it make a statement. I feel like because a laundry room isn't something that a lot of your guests or a lot of other people see besides just you, then you can really go funky, do bold colors or do whatever you desire and not worry about it not matching with the rest of your home. But that can also just depend on where your laundry room is located in your home. For the board and batten walls, the one that we are putting up here on top is a one by four board. The boards that are going to end up going vertically down are going to be one by three boards. And then at the very top, we add this like chair rail type board, which is a one by two. For the placement of the very top horizontal boards, we just aligned it with the shelf that was already there. 
Once we have all of the measurements in the places that we want the vertical run boards, which are the one by three boards, then we're just using some nail glue to actually stick it to the wall in place, make sure everything's level and even, and then we'll use the nail gun to nail the boards in place. In my opinion, the hardest part of doing board and batten walls is getting all of the measurements correct and getting everything completely level. Now, they say that you should always measure twice and cut once because if you cut a board too short, then you actually have to go back to the store and get a brand new board, which we almost had to do. But luckily, Chris got all of the measurements exact, so everything fit pretty perfectly in place. <music> Next step was to pick out a paint color for the wall. So I went over to Sherman Williams and got three different samples. I laid out a couple tiles just to see. The first one was Evergreen Fog, which is Sherman Williams 2022 color of the year. The next one was a darker color Urban Bronze, which was actually Sherman Williams 2021 color of the year. And the third one was an Escape Gray, which actually was more of a green. It was right next to the Evergreen Fog, which I was actually going for a green color but I was kind of liking darker colors so I threw in that one dark color just to see what it would look like so that is the first color that is the evergreen fog that I'm testing out that's actually the lightest color and after painting almost every single room in our house so far watching countless videos on how to paint and painting tips. The one or two tips that always stick with me that I always remember is whenever you are sampling paint to make sure that you paint um, a sample spot in every single wall in that room. So I'm actually doing that. I'm painting in, in one of the walls and then I go back and paint a whole nother side wall. The next tip they say is to make sure that it dries 100% and have it in the lighting that you're going to have it. So if you paint like during nighttime and you just have your um, light on opposed to like having it with the full sunlight then make sure that you look at it throughout the day so that you can see what it looks like in every single lighting now in our laundry room we have no windows there's absolutely no sunlight coming in so I didn't have to worry about that but I did paint every single wall and I let it dry overnight uh, like I said I asked you guys over on Instagram to give me some help on picking a color so thank you for everyone that decided now I don't typically lean towards like green colors it wasn't really something that I ever thought I would do. I'm more of like a neutral person and I typically stick to neutrals because I always get nervous if I go too, too bold, then I'm not gonna like it like in the next few months and then I'll have to go back and repaint it. So the thing about the laundry room is that I kept seeing all these Pinterest colors of green colors and like adding like botanical prints and our pictures and things like that. So it made it more earthy. So that's why I was leaning actually more towards a green, even though it's not my typical style. Um, I just really, really loved the way that these looked in these Pinterest pictures. Now I had to throw in a dark color just to kind of get an idea and get the feel of it. And overall, I like the color Urban Bronze, which I mentioned was Sherman Williams 2021 color of the year, but just not for this space. So I, do, I know a lot of people voted for that color, but the reason why I decided not to go with that color was because it is too dark for this small of a space. So typically darker colors are going to make your space feel a lot smaller and enclosed. And because there's also no natural sunlight coming through whatsoever, it would have made it feel even more dark. So again, I would probably like this color for another area, but just for this exact um, space, I decided not to do that one. But while I'm letting those colors dry and I decide on a color the next day, I still have so much organizing to do. We have declutter in our bedroom that has been there for days and it takes me like a whole separate video to decl declutter, organize, get new things, make this space a little bit more functional. So actually in next week's video is when I'm doing the entire decluttering and organizing of the laundry room. But let's go ahead and start finishing up this space. So as we begin tiling the space, what we did not do was fully level the floor. So 
I saw on a YouTuber, Stephanie at home, she bought these little yellow levelers so that you don't have to level the floor before you weigh the mortar. You actually, um, those little things actually help level the floor as you're laying the tile down. We drew a line right down the center of the laundry room from the doorway and that is where we're starting. We went back and forth a little bit whether or not to lay the tile diagonally, but overall I just liked the pattern just straight up and down and it made it so much easier because the only cuts that we had to make were actually um, along the sides and closer to the doorway. We are using the one and one sixteenth spacers which are very, very thin. And um, the reason why I wanted to go super thin was because I wanted the pattern to flow evenly without a whole bunch of grout space in between. We purchased about 80 square feet of tile and we got the tile from Floor and Decor. We are using the 13 by 13 inch square tiles and it was about $1.39 per square foot. Not used to this. I don't know how to act, don't know how to adapt to this situation Not used to this, no I'm not I better let myself Give in to love, believe in us No matter what it does to my heart Not used to this, no I'm not It was like if we were to waste These moments The light poets to me a tile saw to make all of the tile cuts which we purchased at Home Depot not used to this not prepared not used to this not prepared not prepared it was like if we were to wait so one of the biggest things that has held us back from doing a lot more DIY projects is really just prioritizing time to be able to do them Chris and I are both working and our weekends tend to always just get booked up. So finding time to actually prioritize and start these DIY projects is really our hardest thing. So the thing that I like to do the most is always have a plan, whether I'm starting a DIY project or just an organizing project, I always have to do a little bit of research and make a plan. So in this space, I first had to see what was my biggest pain point. And for me, it was always having clothes on the floor, always having laundry piled up, and then always walking into a big thing of clutter on that top shelf. I also just found the space plain and dull, and I didn't really want to spend a lot of time in there. So when making a plan, I focused on my three biggest pain points, which were it was dysfunctional, it was disorganized, and it was dull. So when planning this space, we picked out fun and affordable tile and also a fun paint color. We took some time one weekend to go actually pick out the tile and then also pick out the paint. So the next weekend we fully dedicated to this project. So once the tile is put in, it takes about 24 hours to dry. And the next thing that you have to do is kick off all of the levelers because they're pretty set in to the thin set. We had to wait until about Sunday mid-afternoon before we started putting in the grout. I was hoping to have the whole project done by Sunday night so we could go ahead and move the washer and dryer back in and I can start washing clothes again. But you know, with some of these projects, it always takes a few more days than anticipated. So this is Sunday night where Chris is laying the grout. So the key with laying the grout is that you have to just do it in small sections because you don't want it to cure on the actual tile because it is going to be very, very difficult to get off if it is dried on the tile. And it does dry very fast. So this step didn't take very long at all. I wanna say it took him about an hour, maybe, two hours at the absolute most. And we ended up going with a dark gray grout color. That was just the grout color that they had in the sample at the store. So we just thought that we liked it. It looks great. And with darker grout colors, I feel like it's so much easier 
to clean or shall I say not clean because you don't know when it is super dirty. Our other grout color was very light and you could see areas where it kind of stained darker. Now because I don't clean our grout like weekly or super often then to me it's just better to go with darker grout color. But because the tile is also really light it just looked good against the tile color. Now, as I was saying a little bit before, whenever you're thinking about redesigning a room is to really think about where, what are those main pain points and then kind of come up with a plan to how you can solve those pain points. Now, I've already said this a couple of times before, but in next week's video, I'm focusing on the next two pain points, which are the disorganization and the dysfunctional. So I'm going to figure out how to make this space a little bit more functional and also way more organized. So make sure you are subscribed so not only do you see the DIY transformation, but you also see the organization transformation. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you're getting some ideas to transform some of your spaces. Or if you've just completed a transformation, let me know what your next project is. So the next step is to finish painting the space and the paint color that we all decided on was the Sherman Williams Escape Gray. It was the lightest of the three choices, definitely has a more of a green tint with a little bit of gray mixed into it. And I think it was the best choice that was the earthy look that I was going for. decided not to paint the entire laundry room. We're just painting up to that one by two board. This will make the area that we did the board and batten on the walls really stand out and kind of contrast with the color of paint that we already have. Now I may go back and paint the top portion of it white later on, but for now I just painted the bottom section. The one thing that I'm still waiting on is for Chris to come in and do the caulking on the sides of the board and also sand and putty all of the nail holes on the boards. So what I'm doing is painting the bigger sections first and then once he comes in and completes all of that then I will go back and paint all of the wood panels. Take you off, I came in way to strong, cannot keep it low key. Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof, auto your taste. It's really a bad reception out there, where you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? I've lost you. Now Chris is finishing up all of the caulking on the sides of the boards. We will let it set and then I will finish painting. So he is using the DAP Dynaflex window, door, and trim sealant. This just helps blend the panels into the wall so it gives it a nice smooth edge. And when you're painting, it doesn't make it so that there's like a gap in between where the wall placement is and where the wood panels are. Now once the caulking or the sealant has completely dried, then I can go in and finish painting the rest of the boards. It's been a few days now and I am determined to finish up this project. The laundry room isn't something that we can really procrastinate on because like I mentioned several times before, the longer that this project takes, then the longer, the more clothes that we have just sitting there waiting to be washed. But this is kind of a nifty tool that I got a really long time ago. It helps with the edging so that you don't have to tape up the sides. You can dip it in the paint and it has a straight edge and the paint will kind of go evenly around the edges without having to tape. Now, does it work perfectly every single time? Not really. So if you're very, very particular about making sure that the paint doesn't get on the side, then I would consider just taping it off instead of using this little paint tool. 
But finally, we have finished the DIY portion of it and it turned out absolutely amazing. So now, before we do anything else, the goal is to get the washer and dryer back in, get them back in commission, and then we will switch out the light fixture. So in the several days that it took to complete this project, I also began to get a few things to help with the dysfunction of it and also the organization of it. So most of that stuff I will be sharing, like I said several times, in next week's video, but I'm just giving you guys a little sneak peek here. We used to hang around town pretty late. I spent the week thinking about our next day. If you watched last week's video, then you will have noticed that we switched out all of the pendant lights in our kitchen and therefore we decided to reuse the lights that were there. So this is one of the areas where we're using one of the pendant lights. And now that we are coming to the end, let me give you guys the full before and after. And if you're not subscribed already, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe. from my window sun's coming up like the day before you're like a stone on my pillow i don't make a sound when i shut the door oh, you don't have to